أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله أستغفره ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا من يهدي لا فلا مدلا ومن يدل فلا هاديا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له عز وجل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي السلام من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يسيء ما فإن لا يدور إلى نفسه ولا يدور الله شيئا أما بعد فقال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم في سورة الحج بسم الله ذلك بأن الله هو الحق وأنه يحيي الموتى وأنه على كل شيء قدير وأن الساعة آتية لا ريب فيها وأن الله يبعث من في القبور وصدق الله العظيم بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن الكريم ونفعني وياكم بالذكر الحكيم إنه هو جواد رؤوف الرحيم أن حي التاريخ I see refuge in Allah from Satan, from Shaitan, the accursed devil in the name of Allah, the merciful, the compassionate, all praise is due to Allah all gratitude is due to Allah. I seek his help and beg his forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the mischief and the evils of our souls. Whomsoever Allah guides, there is none who can lead that person astray and whomsoever Allah finds in error, there is none to guide them. I bear witness there is no God, no deity existing Therefore, worthy of worship, accept Almighty Allah, glory be to Him, who is one alone, unique, without partner or associate. And I bear witness further that Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, is Allah's servant, messenger, and apostle. And he, Allah, sent his messenger in truth and with the truth as a bearer of glad kindness. And also as a warner, Nazirah, a warner in advance of the hour of judgment. Therefore, whomsoever obeys Allah and his messenger, surely that person is rightly guided. And whomsoever, and whomsoever Allah finds in error, for that person does not harm Allah this least little bit, the slightest little bit. That's for what follows. For Allah, glory be to him, and said in the Quran in the 22nd surah of the Quran, Surah Al Hajj. This is so because Allah is the reality. It is he who gives life to the dead, and it is he who has power over all things. And verily, surely, the hour will come. There could be no doubt about it, or about the fact that Allah will raise up all who are in the grave. And surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, glorified and exalted be he, has spoken the truth. O oh, you who believe, surely the day of judgment 
is a reality. And it is for each of us to ask ourselves, how will you prepare for it? How will you prepare for the inevitable reality of the Day of Judgment? Allah, as he says, is al-haq, the truth and the reality. And he knows all. And he reveals to his servants and worshipers knowledge of the unseen. Further, the knowledge of the unseen, as we reflected upon last week, includes the knowledge of Asa'a, the knowledge of the hour. We reflected upon the tafsir of Aragil, Radiallahu one, who said that in striving to understand Asa'a, in striving to understand the hour, prophetically speaking, he said that we understand Asa'a to Sogra, the minor hour of individual death. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that when a person dies, the hour has come for them. And Aragib also said that Asa'atul was the middle hour of a generation's passing is for our reflection. And we shall be or must acknowledge that for every hour, there is a resurrection that accompanies it. We shall be resurrected individually on Judgment Day. And our generation will be resurrected, perhaps in this life, through our progeny, but certainly in the next life. So today we reflect upon the last or third understanding of Asa'a, and that is Asa'a to Cobra, the great hour. Today we reflect upon that great and terrible day of al Piyama, the resurrection of Yawm the day of judgment, Yawm the day of noise and clamor. For surely the Akira, the hereafter, is a reality. And this is our belief. As Muslims, you have heard me say before, the difference between a believer and an unbeliever is the unbeliever only believes in the seen. The Muslim believes, the believer believes in the seen and the unseen. And the judgment and resurrection are realities. And this too is our belief as Muslims. And the great hour, Asa'atul Kobra, is the day of the resurrection of humanity from the graves. And this too is our belief. In the, the uh, ayah that I read, Allah, uh, in making that statement, in making the statement that, uh, let me just go back to it for a moment. And making a statement where he says, uh, he introduces that ayah with the word anna. Anna. We often see that translated in English as uh, surely. 
that actually is what's called an intensifying particle, meaning most definitely, ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Most definitely, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And so Allah says, most definitely, Allah will raise up all who are in the graves, or you who worship Allah. The resurrection is an undeniable inevitability. I know, because I've been around for a few minutes, that some of you have been taught to believe in the mental and or spiritual resurrection of the dead and that alone. The spiritual and mental resurrection of the dead is true. However, that's not all the truth. For Allah, glory be to him, has said, can he who is dead to whom we gave life and a light whereby he can walk amongst men, be like him who is in the depths of darkness from which he can never come out. <clears throat> Thus to those without faith, their own deeds seem pleasing. You hear what Allah said, the dead who is brought back to life is given a light so he can walk amongst men and women as the resurrected dead. Well, us are resurrected dead. Former addict, former sinner, former thief, an ex-convict turned into a formerly incarcerated person a former worshiper of false gods or a former worshiper of his or her own desires, dead, were brought back to life as a living example that what Almighty God has done, he's doing now. And he will do what he has done. Or you who believe, Yet the same God, the same Allah, who has brought individual persons from darkness to light, has done and is doing and will do the same with peoples, with communities, with groups of men, women, and children, so that as they walk the earth, People look at them as a people, as the resurrected dead, and say, look at them. Look at them. They are people who are preparing for another life, a hereafter, a time after here. How will you prepare, and how will we prepare? How will we prepare for the day of judgment and the day of resurrection? Or oh, you who believe. For Allah says in the Quran, uh, Surah 38, Ayah 41, and remember our servant Ayub. Remember our servant Job when he called to his Lord, indeed, shaitan has touched me with hardship and torment. And further, Allah says, so he was told, strike the ground with your foot. This is a spring for a cool bath and drink. And we granted him his family and a like, you know, like number with them as mercy from us and a reminder for those who 
or uh, for those of understanding. We said, and take in your hand a bunch of grass, blades of grass, and strike with it, and do not break your oath. Indeed, we found him patient. He says, what uh, now who saw of you? We found him patiently perseverant, an excellent servant. Indeed, he was one repeatedly turning back to Allah. So you worship Allah. An Nabi Ayyub, the Prophet Job, alayhi salam, is mentioned several times in the Quran, and he is known in Al Islam as Ayyubis Sabur. Job, the patient and persevering ones, oh brothers and sisters in Al Islam. This is how we prepare in this life for life in the hereafter. By studying the example of Job, of the Nebi Ayyub, alayhi salam, and striving to emulate him. We prepare for life in the hereafter by meeting life's difficulties with faith, with sovereign, with patient perseverance. Sovereign is not patience in the sense of, you know, just sitting around waiting for something to happen. Patience, a sovereign, is patient perseverance. It is endurance based on faith. You need sovereign if you're going to run a marathon. You can jump out for a minute and run a, 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 a sprint. But if you're going to run a marathon, you have to have sovereign. And if you're going to maneuver the storms of life, the believer strives to do so with patient perseverance. I don't say this because it's easy. In fact, I say it because it's hard but it's also right. The prophet Job, alayhi salam, was inflicted with disease when uh, uh, his Allah says in the Quran that Job prayed, he said, remember our servant Job, he called to his Lord. Indeed, as that word again, indeed, shaitan has touched me with hardship and torment. We have to be familiar with the history of a Nebi Ayyub, Adi Salam. If you turn to um, uh, Tafsir Ibn Kathir, is a good, accessible uh, Tafsir exegesis, scholarly commentary, translated into English for us. You can just go online, you can look in your phone. The site is the letter Q, Q Tafsir, Dot com. Q is in question, Tafsir, one word, dot com. The whole Tafsir Ibn Kathir comes up. And when you study, when we study the Tafsir of Ibn Kathir, one of the great uh, uh, commentarians on the Quran, he describes a Nebi Ayyub, alayhi salam, uh, in a way that's actually in common with the way that uh, he's described in the Bible, the book of Job. I was reading some commentary on the Bible recently, and they said that of all of those books in the Bible, that the book of Job in its translation is considered to be the one that is closest in meaning to the original language of those scriptures. So Tafsir Ibn Kathir uh, verifies or authenticates the description of Job amongst the people of the book as a righteous man, a dutiful man, dutiful in what? Dutiful in Ibadah. 
and one who uh, in his state of consistently striving to fulfill his duty to Allah and to mankind that Nebi Ayyub salam was excellent. He was reverent. And so Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala saw fit to test him. And, and let me point out that he's also described not only in the, the way in his character, he was Sabia, not only in his character, but Allah blessed him with Hasana fit dunya and Hasana fil akhirah. He was wealthy, he had a large uh, a family, wives, children, land, property, uh, livestock. I mean, he was, he was very wealthy, and he was dutiful. See, some of us, we only become reverent when we're doing bad. Because, you know, in the back of the mind, the concept is, well, you know, maybe if I can just hit this right uh, ayah during the salah, Allah, Allah makes you, I got a job. Allah take care of me. If I could just get this, Right, no, you have to be dutiful whether you're doing well or doing bad. And Job was one of those who did well when he was doing well. He was dutiful in his worship. You're doing very well, you should be constantly thanking Allah. Thanking Allah for what he has done to you or for you and for your loved ones. And then the scriptures say that a Nebi Ayyub salam, that Allah saw fit to test him. And so he lost everything. He lost his health. There was a tragedy. His family was killed. His property was ruined and destroyed. And he kept right on worshiping. He kept right on thanking Allah. Uh, we just, uh, certain parts of, of this hemisphere just made it through this uh, Hurricane Doria. Hurricane Doria leaving in its wake massive destruction. And when I looked at it, I'm watching it, the destruction on the television, I thought of another hurricane, I forget its name, a few years ago. And the uh, news uh, reporter was talking to a woman, and she was standing in front of the ruins of what had once been her home. And I mean her, that was, that, I mean ruins. And so the reporter looked at the woman and he said, don't you feel bad, aren't you, you know, don't you feel hopeless, she lost everything? The woman looked at him and said, nope. And he said, why not? He asked her, why not? <laughs> well, like this is I am. She said, because God is still on the throne and everything that really mattered in my life, I still got my health, my life, and the lives of my family. So I'm good, the woman said. Oh, you who believe. So, and, and so, so again, when our faith is weak, we always think that if things are not going our way, that it's a punishment. Allah is punishing us. Then if the shaitan get in your ear and start uh, 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 whispering, yeah, man, that's because you not this, you not that. Maybe you're not being punished. Maybe you're being tried. Maybe you're being tested. Allah says, man think he's going to get away with saying I believe and not be tested. So when you know, things take a dismal turn, yeah, you know, first you should look and say, well, ooh, 
maybe this is punishment. Maybe this is Allah punishing me for me not doing this, not doing that, not doing the other. Maybe this is Allah punishing me in order to teach me a lesson regarding the way I think or the way I behave or the way I treat other people. We should think like that. And beg Allah for forgiveness and strive to do better. But also we should think, however, we should think, well, maybe I'm being tested, right? A Nebi Ayyub, salam, in the descriptions of him in, in scripture, it says he was a good man. He wasn't a bad man. He was dutiful. He wasn't uh, negligent. And Allah still saw fit to test him and try him. And so this is what Allah is referring to in these ayahs that we uh, just read from the Quran. Uh, when his health failed, broke out in sores and things of that nature. He, at one point, he, he was suffering so much, he said, Ya Allah, Shaitan is whipping me. And Allah says, you know, fear not. Uh, uh, strike the ground with your heel. Some water will come up. Use that to and bathe yourself on uh, with that. Do you know that there, what, that water is a healing agent? The earth is two thirds water. You and I are two thirds water. <laughs> and there are waters that exist on the earth that if you drink them or bathe in them, they will correct certain diseases and illnesses. We thank Allah that he has guided us to a way of life as characterized by us cleansing ourselves with water, a minimum, a minimum of five times a day, subhanAllah. Oh, you who worship Allah, and when Allah says that we granted him his family and a like number with them as mercy from us, well again, this is referring to what Ayyub and Nebi Ayyub was going through. He suffered and he persevered. He kept praying, in other words. He kept praying, he kept making his salah. That's an example that you and I should emulate, some of us. As soon as life's travails uh, beset upon us, the shaitan start whispering, and those, those of weak faith, first thing they do is stop making salam. Ah, oh, man, I'm too depressed. I can't make it, man. I can't, I can't. No, you have to persevere in your salah. And again, the mercy of Allah is such that, you know, we have farts, farai, we have sunnas, we have nawafil, you know, optional prayers. So you you making all of that, you you might need to step up your prayers, or if you're having a hard time, step step down on that. You say, oh, I'm too tired to make all of these. Yeah, fine, but just keep making those farts. Then when Allah strengthen you, Build on your farm, build back up on your sunnahs. Then build back up on your nawafil, on your optional prayers. But keep praying. Man went to the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one day. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I can't, I can't do it like I used to do it. I used to be able to, you know, stay up all night praying. And I used to be fasting all the time. And I'm old now. Me, my, I don't have the strength I, I, I used to have. I can't do it like I used to do it. The Messenger of Allah, salam wa salam, said, "Let your tongue remain moist with the remembrance of Allah." And so there is no reason, no excuse, other than uh, weak faith, to abandon worship. And this is the example that we learn from Anebi Ayyub as-Sabur, Ayyub as-Sabur. 
scriptures say that as he persevered, after he lost everything, you have people, they lose all their material goods, they go jump out the window. You put a, uh, what's the name? A belt around their neck and kill themselves. Guy killed himself, if you believe what's in the news, I do. This guy, uh, I forget his name, the guy that was down there in the federal prison who was facing the total public revelation of his evil deeds. She said, man, I can't take this. He had all the money in the world, didn't help him a bit. Hung himself. So now you're getting fire in this life and fire in the hereafter. It's not the money, it's the faith, or oh, you will believe. So we pray in this life and in the hereafter that when we meet loss, when we meet devastation, when we meet heartache, when we meet that which causes us despair, we pray and we ask Allah to strengthen our iman. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our faith with sovereign, O oh, you who worship Allah. So when we practice this type of sovereign, <coughs> we become a source of strength for others. You've heard me say before, and I'm going to say it again. Let me go back to illness. When a person becomes ill, much less very ill, life-threatening ill, the illness becomes a source of test and trial and difficulty for them. And it becomes a source of test and trial for their loved ones, for those who are around them. It becomes a, a, a test and a trial for them because they're in pain, they're in discomfort, and again, uh, when their defenses of faith you know how they show, uh, what's that, uh, Star Trek. They show the ships of the future, they have a, a shield, and they're being attacked, and the captain say, shields up. And there's a, 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 a defensive shield that surrounds their ship. That's what you have to do with your face. When you hear the shaitan whispering, you have to say, up. Oh, Shields up, where's my Quran? Shields up, where's my prayer? Shields up, where's my zikr? Shields up, where is the company of other people of faith? There's another trick of the shaitan. Scriptures say that a Nebi Ayyub, that he was suffering and he was in pain and those who the scriptures describe as his false friends. <coughs> false friends were constantly whispering in his ear. Yeah, see that man? You know, you're doing all that praying, all that fasting, you won't go out for a drink, you won't do anything, man. And you see your reward, you're doing bad, you need to give up that faith. I know a brother, he was the only Muslim in his large family. And every time Allah would test him and try him, his family would say to him, uh, you know, maybe you should try our religion. Yours don't seem to be working out too well. And he, he kept loving them because they were his family, but he ignored them. And then when Allah, Tabaraka wa ta'ala, glorified and exalted, be he would lift him up out of his condition, and he would just look to his family and he would say, well, I'm still here. Maybe you should try my religion. You see? So illness in the family becomes a source of trial for everybody. It becomes a source of trial when your loved one, your husband, your wife, your son, your daughter, your, your whatever, whatever, is, is, is suffering from end of life uh, illness. 
they have cancer, they have Alzheimer's, they have this, they have that. And their defenses go down the shaitan attacks them, attacks their faith, attacks their will. That's why you have to be there as a person of faith to reinforce them. To reinforce them because they're being buffeted by satanic forces. The uncle of the messenger of Allah, Ali Salaam was Salah, he was dying. You read it, it's right there in all authentic Sirah. And his kafir friends, his unbelieving friends, were constantly at, 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 his, uh, at his bedside, whispering to him, yeah, yeah, you stay with our, stay with our gods. This is, it's almost over now. And the prophet, Ali Salaam, he kept trying to, he was talking to his uncle, trying to get him to take Shahada and reinforcing his faith. And when you read the Sirah, it says that at one point, the Messenger of Allah, he stepped away. And when he stepped away, the unbelievers came in and they kept talking to his uncle, his same uncle who protected him, his same uncle who loved him, his same uncle who he loved. And they kept talking to him and then his uncle died. And Allah's Messenger, Ali Salaam, was like, said, my uncle is in the fire, he said. But he's in the coolest place in the fire. Mm -hmm. Oh, you who believe. So remember this. Remember that life is full of tests and trials of faith. To your faith. To my faith. And then remember the statement of Allah, Ya Yuhaladina Amanu. Or you who believe, seek help in patience and salah. Truly, Allah is with those who patiently persevere. Remember the words of Allah, for this is one of the keys to the res our individual resurrection. On Yamu so that perhaps when we are called forth to be judged, we look at the record of Allah, look at the record and say, oh, yeah, this person here, he or she was one of the sorbili. He or she was one of those who patiently persevered. Subhanakallah. I should have learned that. was. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Iza zuzilatu ardu bizuzalaha wa akrajatu ardu athqalaha wa qala al-insanu malaha yawmazin tuhaddithu wa akbaraha bianna rabbaka awhalaha Yawmazin yashduru al-nas ashtata li yura'u amalahu faman yahma'u mizqala dharratin khayran yara wa man yahma'u mizqala dharratin sharran yara wa aydan huwa qala bismillahirrahmanirrahim wa al-asr
Allahumma filina muslimina wa muslima wa mu'minina wa mu'mina wa muhsinina wa muhsina wa ba'd. Oh, you who believe. I want to conclude this khutbah. First, let me read the translation of these two short surahs. First one, Surah to Zilzal, Earthquake, Surah 99. In the name of Allah, the compassionate, the merciful. When the earth is shaken to its utmost convulsion, and the earth brings out all its inner burdens, man will say, what is happening to it? On that day it shall report whatever has happened on it. For your Rabb, your Lord, shall have commanded it to do so. On that day, men shall proceed and sort it out groups to be shown their deeds. Then whoever has done an Adam's weight worth of good shall see it there. And whoever has done and Adam's weight worth of evil shall see it there. O you who worship Allah, there's a great and terrible day coming that all of mankind must face one day. And I say it, it is the day of judgment, the day of resurrection, the day of reckoning, the day of noise and clamor, and that day will be preceded by prophetic events, prophetic phenomena that will foretell the coming of the hour, the coming of Asa'atul Kobra. Surah Zilzal that we just heard reveals from the unseen that a sign of the coming of the hour shall be never-ending quakes that tear up this world and the earth will cough up its burdens and information at Allah's command. Anytime you see an earthquake <clears throat> and all that devastation that happens, I, I want you to keep in mind that most, most earthquakes, 99% of earthquakes, they only last from 30 to 60 seconds. At best, 90 seconds, when the earth shrugs for just about sometimes less time than it takes you to watch a one-minute commercial on TV. And they leave behind all of that death and destruction. Well, Allah says that there will come a time when there will be never-ending quakes. The quakes will start and they won't end. They won't end after two minutes. They won't end after five minutes. They won't end and the earth shall be shaken and start giving up its secrets. The earth has a lot of secrets, man. Again, one of these hurricane seasons, I'm reading the stuff in the paper. Right here in New York, upstate New York, said that the flood waters saturated the earth to such a degree that coffins started popping up out of the ground. Coffin, the, the ground became so saturated it couldn't hold those coffins and popped them up out of the ground. When you see news reports about the devastation of floods in areas when the waters recede, those waters recede, leaving death, animals that have drowned. I, I, I remember one year, I haven't seen it yet this year, the year just starting. And I remember they were talking about uh, 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 parts of the South where they harvest pigs. And all of these pigs had drowned. So that all of that toxic flesh of these beasts was carcasses laid out. Uh, see, they don't show that on the news. But the, again, that's an example, the earth coughing up its secrets. Listen, if you read the Quran and you know that what Allah says uh, that on the day of judgment, Allah says your limbs are going to be telling on you. 
Limbs are going to be talking. Imagine what the earth will have to say. The earth is a living thing. See, again, we, we don't get it. Scientists call it a biosphere. So what will the earth have to say ab about its abuse at the hands of man? What will the earth have to say about all of its creatures that have been slaughtered by greedy, industrialists and, and, and neglectful people? Will the earth say, a lot of you put these people here to take care of me and they abused me. They destroyed me. What secrets will the earth unfold? And on that day, the great and terrible day, men, meaning human beings, will be sorted out in groups. What group will you be in? What group will I be in? The, the, this is the part of the terrifying inevitability of that, of that which is surely to come. And Allah says that on that day, every atom's weight worth of good will be manifested. And every atom's weight worth of evil is only in them. You know me, I'm, I'm always saying, wow, what is an atom weight? This is my, you know? <laughs> so I went and got a physics, I went online. So it says an atom, the weight of an atom is called an amu or a Dalton is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the minus 24th gram. <laughs> that's, what, that's what an atom weighs. It's zero, I hope I can get this right, zero point zero 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 one nine nine four two grams that's what an atom weighs you know back in the in the ancient days you know they didn't know all this stuff so you read early tafsir of this of this uh, uh statement of a lot it just says the weight of, a, of an ant of an ant so our, our good deeds Allah will be giving us maximum benefit for good deeds done maximum benefit for our uh, uh, obedience maximum benefit for prayer maximum benefit for keeping your private parts where they belong instead of where they don't belong maximum benefit for going through toil and inconvenience because you believe. And Allah will be measuring that same, I don't even have time to read that again, that same measure on the evil deeds done and not wiped away. Only difference is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful. He's so merciful for, but for those good deeds done, excuse me, for the evil deeds done, yeah, and if they, you haven't wiped them away, then you just have to deal with the punishment for those. Whereas for the good deeds done, Allah will be multiplying the blessing benefit of them, for you who worship Allah. And so, and lastly, and so because of that, because of their belief in this, and, and, and their certainty in this, Allah reveals Surah to Asr and the Sahaba would constantly, when they were part company, they would recite that to each other. In other words, they were saying to each other, all right, man, don't forget, we on this, persevere, stay the course, uh, guard your heart against, I always remember this phrase, the first time I heard the assistant imam use it, I was like, what is he talking about? So I went and looked it up, I said, oh yeah, I like this. Phrases, mission drift. 
You have to guard your heart against mission drift. What is our mission? The worship of Allah. What is our mission? The establishment of Deen al Islam in the earth. You have to guard your heart and your mind against mission drift. So we ask Allah to baraka wa ta'ala to have mercy on us. We ask Allah to prepare us for the hereafter as individuals and as a community and as a people and as an ummah. We ask Allah to prepare us for the inevitable reality of the day of judgment. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu alayk. Ameen wa awkari nikaba. Allahumma.